Hey, Julian, how are you? Well, I'm golden yourself. I'm doing pretty good, man. Thank you for asking. Um, so you know what? Uh, obviously, been a minute since we've seen you. Finally making that comeback. Just can you walk us through those emotions to finally be back at this point? Man, uh, I don't really know how to put the emotions to words, man. I'm just excited and uh, pumped to be able to perform on uh, the opener for the pay-per-view card and show everybody what I've been working on for these 31 months. I mean, when you have stuff like like that, you're out of action for a while. I know you had one fight scheduled that just didn't materialize in the end. I mean, that could be very frustrating for any athlete not to compete. So I guess, how do? You, what was your process of staying positive, getting over the hump of not letting it get you all, all the way down? Because obviously that could be a challenge of itself. Uh, you know, honestly, there's two ways you can look at it. You can either look at it like you're a victim and the world's going against you and everything's going against you, or you can look at it as another obstacle that you have to per perform and get over to become who you want to be. And during that time off, that's all I had to focus on is getting over these little obstacles, getting over these little lessons that life was teaching me to become a better athlete and become a better mixed martial artist. Um, Michael Patolo. Your upcoming opponent, another guy kind of new to the promotion. I mean, what are your thoughts on him and what he brings to the table? Hey, Maki's been around. He's a tough, solid guy. He has a good chin, a, a powerful punch. But the difference is, is most people, you know, forgot about me. They don't remember the name. They literally washed me out ever since, uh, you know, I, I tore my arm out. But if you look at my record and the people that I beat, uh, these guys are, are winning. And... I made them highlight reels. I made them $50,000 bonuses. And Maki is going to go in there thinking the same thing, thinking that I'm 2018, Julian, which is 2021, and I'm coming here to give a little bit of romp and stop. My final question, you guys are fighting on Valentine's Day weekend. I'm asking all of the fighters this. What is your idea of a romantic Valentine's Day? Uh... That's a that's a very unusual question. Um, I don't I don't know. I guess the UFC gave me this aura ring, and uh, it only fits on my ring finger. And everyone keeps asking me if I'm married. So technically, I'm married to the game, and the UFC and I are uh, we're, we're a thing now, and uh, we get to celebrate it together in the octagon. I think that's a great answer, bro. So thank you and good luck. Thank you. We will take our next set of questions from Zach Takleb with UFC.com. Oh, shit. Okay, cool. All right, man. Yeah, in terms of uh, making your return and everything, you know, it's in a unique environment, right? Like, this is the Apex. Uh, there's not going to be any fans or anything. Um, is that disappointing at all that you can't come back and, like, kind of hear the roar of the crowd, or are you just happy to be kind of not doing anything? Man, I was on Contender Series Season 1 where you couldn't tell anybody anything. People, media, everybody reaching out to you, trying to put matches together of who they thought they were. And then we fought in the Ultimate Fighter, you know, warehouse at the time over there um, by the Palms. And you really couldn't have that many fans in there anyway. So this is just another stroll to the park for me. Yeah, you know, so what, when you make that walk to the Oscar, what will be going through your head, you know, make your return and I know it's been like a lot of those start and stop and just by so hard and stuff like that but you know what will you be feeling when you make that walk? honestly I, I couldn't tell you but I do know that when I hear Miley Cyrus heart of glass my body's gonna switch into a different person you're gonna see a different side of me that hasn't been seen since 2018 this side that has been caged has been locked up and not been able to you know show its true form because of an injury, because I'm not able to live the way that I want to because I'm not inside that octagon. And what was that process like in terms of, uh, you know, not only recovery, but like trusting your body again to kind of go and do the things that you want to do uh, as a fighter? Man, it was an educational process, you know. We went through a lot of different things, a lot of different PTs, a lot of different doctors talking about it. Um, it was a roller coaster ride. One day you'd be happy, the next day you'd be sad, the next day you'd be excited, and the following day you'd cry. You know, and it was just something that built me as a person and built my arm and made me understand how to use this arm properly 
and how to keep that going and making it stronger throughout this time of my career. And then last one for me, is, is there, you know, other than showing people the evolution of yourself, um, what would you kind of like the statement of this performance to be? I'm here, baby. That's it. I'm here. And uh, I don't really need to make a statement. People are going to love me. People are going to hate me. I'm going to show up. I'm going to make them laugh. I'm going to make some cry. But I'm going to get paid and go on to the next one. We'll take the next set of questions from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Hey, Julian, welcome back. Uh, I know you've talked a lot about, you know, the kind of frustration of the last three years. But when you came up with the Contender Series, you had a lot of momentum because you were on that first series. You had a huge knockout to get into the UFC and obviously had a big impact in your first fight. Coming back now, like, do you feel like it's going to be difficult to rebuild that momentum? Or are you going to you know, kind of remind people who you are with this fight? Man, that's going to be simple. Momentum is pushed by the population. Momentum is pushed by people, you know, Shitty people win fights and get a lot of momentum. I'm just saying, like, all you do is win and everybody's going to be on board. And if you get a knockout, everybody's going to go wild. I've seen it throughout this whole entire game. I've seen it in three years out, people being pushed faster than they should have, things like that. So it doesn't matter. I don't care. If I go in there and we get a boring decision, which I really hope it doesn't happen, but if we get that, I got paid, I'm on the next route, and then we're gonna go out there and have the next person, and they're gonna open up a little bit more and it's gonna create that opportunity. It just, I'm not looking for everybody else's, you know, push towards me. I'm looking for myself push to get me to where I wanna be. You hear a lot about a ring rust in this sport, and, and you know, some guys like Dominic Cruz say it's a state of mind, you know, if you, if you come back and you're rusty, that's on you. Other people say, you know, it is. Your timing can be a little off, the training isn't fighting. Uh, how have you dealt with that? Because, again, it's unusual for anyone to be out, and I know it's been frustrating for you to be out as long as you have been. Yeah, I mean, ring rust is a thing for people, for sure, but it comes down to how you train. If you train like, you know, a slow, methodical, well, I'm going to do this, go light, then that's how you're going to go. But if you're training like you're actually fighting, and you're getting those rounds and those types of mitt work like you're actually fighting, then that ring rust won't go because it you're working through that. You're you're building your momentum and your 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 memory in your body to be able to to utilize your tools at the right speed at the right time in the octagon. And when you when you made your UFC debut coming out of the contender series, you kind of were getting this reputation as you know, high impact, you know, you know, the, the exciting kind of fighter we all want to watch. When you look at this kind of style, make a style matchup with Maka Patola, do you feel like this is the exact kind of fight you want to come back to? Because this will give you the opportunity to uh, to have another one of those, you know, memorable performances. Yeah, for sure. If you guys say so, if you guys look at this uh, you know, type of fight as like we're gonna go out there and just beat each other's faces in until someone gives, then yeah, for sure, we'll definitely be hyped up. But, uh, you know, I'm going out there and I'm doing what I do best. And he's the type of person that can bring out the best in me. That's why it's the best matchup for me personally. And last one for me, I gotta ask you, mention the walkout song, uh, Heart of Glass by Miley Cyrus. I like the zombie cover a little better, but you know, it is what it is. So tell me the inspiration for that particular walkout. Uh, so I was actually watching Saturday Night Live, and uh, she performed um, Heart of Glass on there. She did the live deal, and I was like, oh, man, that's amazing. And I wanted to find it online, but all you could do is just see, like, YouTube videos. So I actually sent out a tweet saying, like, look, if you put this on stream, I will walk out to it, like, 100%. I love Miley. That zombie cover is amazing, but if I were in Ireland, that's where I'll be able to play that song. But Right now, uh, we put that out there, and everyone, all the fans, everybody teamed up with me. They're retweeting it, resharing it, and she ended up putting it on Spotify, iTunes, and all the uh, you know platforms to be able to play it and stream it. So I I'm following my duty and, and walking out to that song. <laughs> Thanks, Julian. Looking forward to it. Yep. Thank you. We will take our next set of questions from Cote Cruz with Four to Win MMA. How you doing, Julian? Good to talk to you. Good talking to you as well, man. Thank you, sir. Well, 
Um, first of all, congratulations on your, on your successful podcast with a uh, longtime MMA fan, Kendra Loss, The Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a, it's a fun Beauty and Beast podcast for sure. Well, uh, did it help you to have that outlet with Kendra during the podcast while you were away from fighting? Um, yeah, for sure. Teaming up with Kendra on a podcast could help out a lot. It, it definitely helped out with my um, commentary roles that I ended up getting with like Tough Enough. FAC five, um, that's going to happen here March 5th. Uh, it's also helping me be able to do just different outlets and, and sponsorships and everything. It's just giving more practice on the mic to be able to talk clearly and more, you know, just a better version, I guess, of uh, myself. And it, it helped build me up on the outside to where I can actually have a, I guess, a, an escape route after I'm done with fighting. Well, congratulations on that. Uh, before your layoff, you were still considered one of the fresher faces in the UFC octagon. Uh, were you ever able to get over what some may call the UFC jitters uh, after that uh, time off? Um, I, I don't, I don't know what you mean. Like, can you reword the question? I was talking about the time before you were away from the sport. You were still considered one of the fresher faces of the UFC. Right. So were you able to get over from the time that you were competing until the time you were off? Uh, were you able to get over what some may call the UFC jitters? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, like when I first my first fight in the UFC, if you watch with Darren Stewart, we definitely made that one uh, one to remember. We went out there. He was fighting like it was his last fight in the UFC and I was fighting like it was my first fight in the UFC. I was excited. I was amped up, ready to rock. And then, you know, my next fight, I tore my arm out, which I evolved, and I was able to control that adrenaline. And with this time, I've been able to just educate myself and just understand a lot more of me and control my own emotions. So, yeah, I would say that I've developed, you know, better jitters, I guess. I've developed control over the jitters. Well, can you comment on your preparation for this fight? Was it particularly difficult with all the covered restrictions that are currently in place? Absolutely. It was, it was very different. I had to leave Las Vegas, my home. I, I was training at times in the park with a couple people like Tom Lawler, Corey Hendricks. We'd meet up at the park sometimes to hit some drills. I'd meet up with AJ Williams to hit mitts here and there, but I wasn't able to find that that team environment, be able to go there because of COVID. And, you know, I went to Alabama to go train with Eric Andrews and Walt Harris and help them out whenever the, you know, first UFC fights were happening after COVID, helped them out. And then my nephew was being born in Kansas City, went to Kansas City, and James Krause was, you know, doing some classes, some small, small classes uh, following the guidelines. So I started jumping in there, and I pretty much stayed – away from Las Vegas, where I live since literally April. I haven't been back to Vegas. Like the, the third time I've been back to Vegas, and the other times have been because of fight cancellations. I fly out here because of fight or something like that. So it was extremely different or difficult when it came to that preparation. But, you know, James literally took me under his wing. He put a lot of time and effort, put me on a schedule, Uh, he got me from 255 to 186. He evolutionized my game leaps and bounds. Grant Dawson has educated me in the wrestling realm and educated me in the understanding of how to actually fight and not just go out there and wing it. So it, it was a different process. It was a different lifestyle. It was a different, you know, want that I had, but I absolutely needed Well, welcome back home, sir. I hope you have a good time in Vegas, and hopefully you have a great fight. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you. We'll take the next set of questions from Ryan McCarthy with Low Kick MMA. Hey, Julian. How are you, man? What up, dog? How you doing? Good, good. Welcome back. Uh, hope all is well, man. And, yeah, thanks for um, giving us some time here. Wanted well, to get your thoughts. You know, it's been a while since you've been in the octagon. Um, you know, what, how, um, how active are you looking to be in 2020? What, what does the ideal 2021 look like for Julian Marquez? Man, I mean, that question is a very like 
very unique question. If you think about it, it all depends how each fight goes. Like, if I go in there and I tear another muscle or if I split my head open or whatever, like, or we have, like, a, a three-round war, you know, it, I probably won't be that active. But if I go in there and start cleaning people out, you know, then I would like to be active. So I would love to have 10 fights in a row, but that's not, that's not realistic. You know, we saw Kevin Holland bust out five fights in a year, and he was taking them over and over, but even then, it was tough for him to get those fights. So, I, I mean, I would like to fight four times. You know, if I can get five in, if I can get six in, that would be awesome, but the more the merrier. Awesome, man. Yeah, and, and then um, what's the uh, what's the ideal uh, cheat meal after a big W on Saturday for you? What's that look like? That's a very difficult question. I'm going to be honest with you. So we're in the pandemic. The UFC is doing absolutely amazing to keep us safe with all the COVID protocols, keeping us away from, you know, just the general population to, that possibly might get us, you know, another case and whatever, whatnot. So being able to get the food that you really want right now is going to be difficult because it all has to be Grubhub, Postmates, or DoorDash. And... I mean, I really want Jinya ramen. I want some ramen. I've been craving that. And the thing is, is that you can't door dash that. So I had to figure something out. I'm thinking we're leaning towards pasta. Maybe buca de pepos. Um, I don't know. I'm still still going there, but I think pasta would have to be that realm of post foot way in meal. Sounds good, man. Well, best of luck on Saturday and pump the pump to hear entrance song too. So best of luck, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much, Julian. That is all the time we have for you, sir.